Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome again to Condo Insider, Hawaii's show about condo stuff, for lack of a better word. Hopefully it's helpful to board members and homeowners alike. Over the past 105 sessions we've had, it's hard to believe we've done 105 shows, we've talked about a lot of issues, and a lot of them have been expensive issues association faces, like wastewater pipes, you know, sprinkler systems. And I started to think about it, and I realized that one of the elephants in the room is what I'm going to call elevator modernization. A lot of misunderstandings about that. That's certainly, depending on your project, a major expense in your reserve study and a major expense for associations. So I invited a really good friend of mine, Jim Hutchinson from Precision Elevator Inc. to come down today and talk to us about elevator modernization. Doesn't sound like a really exciting topic, but you know we've both been getting an elevator since we were three years old, so we've had a lot of experience with elevators, I guess. So introduce yourself. Tell our audience a little bit about you and, and and then we'll ask about your company. Thank you, Richard, pleasure to be here. Um, well, a little bit about me. I first came to Hawaii back in 89, uh, moved out here from the Philadelphia area. And uh, back in, uh, on the East Coast, I was, uh, actually when I left, I was a design engineer for a robotics company. So when I first got out to Hawaii, there wasn't a whole lot of that kind of work out here. So I soon found myself in the elevator business and uh, initially was an account manager for a few years, but I naturally gravitated towards elevator modernization just because of the technical aspects of that segment of the business. So I, I got into, uh, uh, always focused on elevator modernization, have been in the business now for over 25 years. The first 10 years uh, I spent working for a couple of the large uh, OEM companies, but about 15 years ago I went out on my own and uh, have been working in different capacities of the elevator business, always with a focus on elevator modernization. And today I am the uh, majority owner and president of Precision Elevator. Now, uh, important thing to understand about Precision Elevator is we're not just another elevator company. We have a very unique business model. Uh, at, Pre at Precision Elevator, we focus at being the best at one thing, and that's elevator modernization. And we do that by, with our focus and our commitment to uh, develop our expertise in this specialized niche segment of the elevator business. And that's what enables us to, 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 to be the best and provide a superior product. So Precision Elevator, in, in simple terms, might be they're an independent consultant, so you're not selling a particular brand of elevator or, or specific company's elevator modernization. Would it be fa safe to say your job is to look at the, the actual condition of the building and what they're dealing with as far as the issues and determine a scope so they can get bids and evaluate upgrades and that kind of thing? Is, or, or are you actually selling elevators? Well, we're not a consultant. What we are is a design-build contractor. So what that means is we will uh, provide assessments on elevators and we will write specifications for elevators. Specification is a, is a detailed scope of work. We will do that and we'll provide that, uh, those services as a courtesy to our potential clients. But we are a licensed elevator contractor, so we would also provide a bid for that scope of work and if uh, selected to do the work, we would purchase the material and do the actual installation and of course provide the service after the modernization was completed too. So we do we really provide a, uh, a turnkey or a, a term that's used a lot today is a, 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 an integrated solution is a, is a popular term. So that's what we do. Being in the condo management business, I used to always tell boards, I'd, I would say to them, I says, think of it of an airplane and you have engines on an airplane. Are you going to wait until the last second, the last time that elevator will go up and down before you replace the elevator in the sense once you have an elevator that's past its useful life, 
I'm assuming it takes a long time to to replace it. I mean, from beginning to end, how long would something like this take from designing through ordering through construction? Typically, what kind of time frame are we looking at? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right, Richard. I mean, modernizing your elevators is not a question of if, it's a question of when. And many, many of the elevators in Hawaii are, are, are old. Uh, the typical lifespan of an elevator, intended lifespan of an elevator, is about 25 to 30 years. So if your building is 30 plus years old, your elevators are, are overdue for modernization. And, and as you said, the, the time frame to modernize is, is long. It's a long cycle. Typically from the time that a, uh, a board decides that they want to modernize their elevators to they actually uh, have equipment and workers on site, it could be up to a year. And you were giving me a statistic earlier. We were talking about buildings that have only one elevator versus more than one elevator. Uh, what percent was that that had only one elevator? Yeah, I, I was looking at a database of uh, buildings that have elevators and I, I noticed that 50 percent of buildings in Hawaii that have elevators have only one elevator. So there's a lot of single elevator buildings out there. So in theory, if you want to modernize your elevator and you have one elevator, depending on whether you choose an accelerated schedule or not, you could be down for a year. Yeah, that's correct, that's correct. And, and with a single elevator building, um, it's even more important to be proactive because the last thing you want is to not be proactive and have the elevator break down and go out of service and not have that planned. Well, I think what we were saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, you know more about this than I do, we said a year or so, year plus, from beginning to end. If in fact your elevator is working, a lot of that work is being done while your elevator is working, the design, the building, the bidding, and what, how much time is it typically for, I know there's different floors, different heights, different mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. Take one elevator in an average size building, if you had everything ready to go in place, mm -hmm. about how long would the elevator be down? Um, down f while it's being modernized? Right. Uh, typical elevator modernization, um, let's say, take the case of a typical building, uh, might be a 10 to 15 story building with, with two elevators. A project like that, like that could to take up to six months. So you're looking at modernizing one elevator at a time, of course, so you always have one elevator in service. So it's, it's up, to, up to three, maybe two and a half to three months per elevator, you're down to one elevator. Yeah, and I had the point I was making is back to my engine story. If you wait till the thing fails, they're not going to have an elevator for a year or more. Yeah. If they proactively plan this, you're talking about for one elevator, three months or so that they're going to have to make exceptions. And of course, that has an impact on seniors and people living in the building. But uh, by waiting, I guess I'm saying they put themselves more at risk yeah. than less at risk to, to do this. That's true. It's, 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 it's very risky, particularly in the scenario with the one elevator buildings, because um, you, you can't just have the elevator go down and not have an elevator at all. But it, at some point, you're going to modernize. The elevator is going to be down for a period of time. Um, there are ways to, to reduce that downtime by accelerating the schedule, as you said. But even with accelerating the schedule, you might go from 10 to 12 weeks to maybe six to seven weeks, or maybe five weeks, but you still have several weeks in there that you absolutely have no elevator at all. So it's, it's very important to plan ahead. So for someone like a board, are there signs that kind of tell you that we're getting, we should start thinking about this? Certainly, if you're in a 30-year-old building, that in itself should tell you you should start thinking about this. But yeah. are there things you start to see with your elevator that says, hey, maybe we should think mm -hmm. about this. This is getting ready to have bigger problems? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, the, as you said, the, the age is, a, is an easy one. But besides age, uh, if you're riding the elevator every day, you know that the, the ride quality is poor. Uh, the stops and starts can be abrupt. The door operation is clunky and loud. If it's breaking down frequently, if people are getting stuck in the elevator, if maintenance costs are going up. Uh, there's indicators like that that uh, can be resolved with, a, with an elevator modernization. And I guess my question is that why are people modernized? Are there, are there benefits to modernizing? I mean, it's a, this is not cheap. 
this is a major component expense and and we can't give them estimates but I'm saying for a typical building one elevator like you described 12 14 stories you're talking about a quarter million to four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's it's quite a bit of money, and there are definite benefits to modernizing. Um, again, I touched on maintenance costs, and that's probably one of the biggest reasons people will will look to modernize is to lower their maintenance costs. It's never one reason. It's never because just lowering maintenance costs is not the the cost difference is not going to pay for the modernization. It's usually uh, several reasons. Other reasons or other benefits to modernizing would be would be simply to improve the performance and reliability of the ele of the elevator. Uh, another reason would be to increase uh, improve the safety and accessibility of the elevators and, and your building in general. Um, reducing energy consumption is another is another bit, which of course leads to reduced cost. Yeah, I think the energy consumption has to do with the motors and I don't know the correct engineering term or electrical term. It's like on-demand motor mm -hmm. versus. Uh, you want to describe, explain that to people so I understand yeah. what it is, but uh, give, give give them a better answer than I would. Yeah, I mean, typically the elevators that were installed back in the '60s and '70s were in, were all DC based because back then we couldn't control AC motors like we can today because we didn't have microprocessors yet in in elevators. But today, all the new elevators and all the newly modernized elevators are all AC based. So using um, alternating current, current as opposed to uh, direct current. When modernizing, you're getting rid of the DC equipment and you're putting in all AC equipment. Typically, you're also getting rid of the old geared machines and putting in gearless machines. So those two factors alone can reduce energy consumption up to 60%. Yeah, because I think the old elevators, right, the electricity is running all the time whether someone's using the elevator or not. That's right. We're under this new AC gearless microprocessor system They only draws electricity when someone's using the elevator. That's right. And so there's some significant cost savings and, and it helps in a way pay for the elevator because there will be a savings and I'm going to assume there's some savings on the monthly elevator maintenance contract because I'm sure elevator companies are smart enough to charge more for old elevators than a new elevator. Yeah, that's right. There, there, there typically can be a substantial reduction in maintenance costs simply because you're you're getting rid of the 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 equipment that's in there. The old equipment is very maintenance intensive. It has a lot of mechanical moving parts that require a lot of time and maintenance to keep them adjusted properly so the elevator runs properly. With getting rid, you're getting rid of all that with a modernization. Everything's microprocessor based. Um, there's very few moving parts now, so the requirements for maintenance are less, so the cost goes down. So, whenever I've talked to a board about uh, you know modernization, the first thing they say to me is, "Good, we can make our elevator faster now." Mm -hmm. And I know the answer to this as well, but <laughs> explain that in, the, in real terms, because I'm not sure they can make it faster, but they can make it more efficient. Yeah, that's always a question that comes up, because um, people are tired of waiting for their, their old elevators. So they think, can we speed this elevator up? And the, the easy answer is no. You typically don't increase the speed if the elevator is engineered to run at 350 feet per minute. After the modernization, it's running at 300 feet, feet per minute. But what you can do is you can reduce the wait times. And the way you do that is by making, the modernization will make your elevator more run more efficiently. So the doors will open and close more efficiently on each floor, which will enable the elevator to get to where it needs to go more efficiently, there, thereby reducing your wait times. So. So he has some, quote, engineering architectural considerations because when the building was built, it's kind of built around the elevator. That's correct. And so you have an elevator shaft and, and certain heights and certain sizes, which by in itself prevents you from making it, quote, faster. Although I guess with enough money and enough with, with, <laughs> wherewithal and desire, at any price you could do yeah. something, but uh, probably most boards couldn't afford it. Yeah, with enough uh, money you can do just about anything, I yeah. think. And, and yeah, you, you probably could increase the speed, but it's usually cost prohibitive for most AOAOs. And there's been a lot of confusion, and uh, after this question we'll take a short break. Uh, there's been a lot of confusion too because of the Marco Polo fire about fire or, or smoke detectors in elevators, about whether that's manned 
mandated and if you put the modernization in, that means you have to at the same time modernize the whole rest of your fire suppressant systems. Comment on that. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and that refers to what we call related work, which is work that has to be done when you're doing an elevator modernization that's not considered elevator work, but it has to be done in order to meet code um, to, um, for the new elevator uh, modernization. And the, um, basically, uh, one of the biggest misperceptions is that when installing smoke detectors on every enclosed, on every uh, landing which is required, that you have to then tie that system into your building's fire alarm system. Or maybe you, they, people think you have to first modernize or install a fire detection system before you can modernize your elevators. And the answer is you, you do not. You can actually modernize your elevator, put in a standalone smoke detector system, and it does not have to be interfaced or tie into your other system in, in any way. Okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break. We're going to be back in one minute, continue talking about modernization. I have some more questions for my good friend and expert, Jim Hutchinson. Thank you. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner. And I'm Beatrice Gantelmo. And we have come in this series, young and old alike, to take a look at our past, your past, and the fastest not seen history books. History books are his story and what we refer to as mirrors of the past. But we as colonized people, indigenous peoples and people of color, look into the mirror and do not see ourselves there. On the ties that bind, we will examine those underlying causes. Please join us with the ties that bind on Wednesdays at noon, twice a month. We look for you there. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel, ThinkTech. ThinkTech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Welcome back to Condo Insider. We're sitting here with Jim Hutchinson, president of Precision Elevator, talking about the challenges of elevator modernization, something whether you believe it or not, every building will ultimately face. And if your building is 30 years old, it's something you should be planning for, thinking about, putting your reserve money in. And when we, talk, we left with Jim, we were talking about logistical considerations. So when you, when you start to plan a modernization, it's not just, let's replace this elevator. There's probably peripheral and, and related work that has to be considered. So what are, the, what are the things you look at when you're looking at a modernization? Well, obviously, the obvious thing is, is the elevators themselves and the upgrades that are needed in order to remedy the symptoms that we talked about earlier. Um, but aside from that is, the, is what we call related work. And related work, again, is, is work that has to be done as a result of the modernization, which isn't traditionally considered elevator work. It's more building work, but related to the elevator modernization. The, the biggest item is the, is the smoke detectors that we talked about. That's really the, 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 the big item. And so are there new safety requirements for new elevators versus the old code, the old elevators? Are there new safety things that are available to uh, uh, versus the old days? Yeah, I mean, we Hawaii's actually was under the 1996 code all the way up until 2015, if you can believe that. And we, we only recently, in 2015, updated to the 2010 code. And so with that came a lot of additional safety requirements for the elevators. Most of that was... Um, seismic type features and, and things like that. How about a person stuck in an elevator? Is there any difference? Is it still the little uh, the phone and the, and the push the button kind of a thing? Well, you, still, you do still have that requirement, but there is another requirement, which is for a three-way communication for buildings that are, uh, or elevators that are more than 60 feet tall, require a three-way communication device between the elevator car, the lobby, and the elevator machine room. And how about, you know, the issue of fire? I think that 
you know, if I'm not mistaken, if there's a fire now or the, uh, under modern systems anyway, if there's a fire, it takes the elevator to the first floor, or is, is that is that like code, or is that just how it works but, now, or? No, that, well, that's been, that is code, and it's been code even in, when we're under the 96 code. It's changed a little bit as far as how it operates, but basically when a, when a fire is detected, the elevator will stop what it's doing, it will, a buzzer will sound, and the elevators will immediately return to the lobby and park with the doors open. That's called phase one fire service. And so when that happens, owners should know to head to the exit stairwells and go down the exit stairwell because yep. their elevators don't go push the elevator button it because won't, it won't come. It's not going to come. And that's probably the most important thing is to um, get out of the building as safely and as fast as possible. It is. And the reason the elevators park at the lobby is they're waiting for the firemen to get there. And when the firemen get there, they can then put the elevators into what's called phase two fire service, which allows them to manually use the elevators to go up and fight the fire. So they can use the elevator to fight the fire. The firemen can use it because they have a special key. They have a special they key. They have a special key. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. So if you look at this, you know, one of the things I've found that when when boards look at this issue, they always say two things to me. Number one, oh no, we're going to have to get 67% of the owner's approval, and, and no one's going to approve it. And, and to be candid with you, from my experience, because you're replacing an existing component of the building, they don't need owner's approval. The board has the ability to make a business decision. And frankly, they have a legal obligation to maintain the building, mm -hmm. that they have the ability, to, for everybody's reference, to do a modernization of the elevator without the approval of the homeowners. The problem is how they're going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And the problem typically is they may or may not have enough money in their reserves to do a modernization. They may not have uh, accurately projected the costs, or maybe the elevator hasn't lasted quite as long as they think it was going to last. But from my experience, they do have the ability to go to the bank and get a long amortization loan, I'm going to say 15 to 20 years, depending on the bank, and pay for that on a monthly basis. And when you think about that logically, let's just say you're going to go borrow the money on a 15-year loan, mm -hmm. and so you have a principal and interest payment to make. Well, you've now maybe saved some money in electrical costs to help pay for that bank loan. Yeah. And you may have saved some money in the elevator maintenance costs because Absolutely. a newer elevator, so it may not have the full impact yeah. that everybody thinks with respect to uh, a modernizing an elevator when you start looking at the trade-offs to help pay for that loan and they may have some money in the reserves so they're it actually is a wash you know you never know yeah, but yeah. more times than not i have found that condos are very conservative and, and it's probably some increased cost to them to, well, to do that not, not even to mention the fact that if they do wait to do the modernization five years from now or whatever the cost of the modernization is then going to go up so you got to factor that in as well yeah, and elevator costs i can tell you from experience have a higher inflation rate than the normal inflation because the elevator unions, they have these built-in escalations, so it's it's quite expensive, if I remember correctly. It is, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of money in the elevator business, for sure. Yeah. There's a lot of cost there. So what, what, what do you do when you look at the specs and you put this whole process together? What are some of your considerations? Well, uh, Specifications are, are really a necessity when, when doing a modernization. And, and a specification, for those that don't know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a detailed written scope of work. It encompasses, not, again, not just the elevator work, but all the related work. Uh, so everything's included in this one document, this one scope of work. One of the reasons that a spec is necessary is that you would use that to get competitive bids from elevator contractors. And having a single scope of work that everyone's bidding on, uh, you're insured to get an apples to apples bid. Uh, what, you what you wouldn't want to do is call the individual elevator companies and simply ask them for a price to modernize your elevators. That would be like contacting builders and say, can you give me a price to build me a house? You know, and of course their questions would be two bedroom, three bedroom, two bath. You know, you, you need some type of common plans and specs that everyone is bidding to. So that's why specs are, are a necessity. Well, I remember in the old days, maybe it's not true anymore, that there was some talk about when you get bids for elevators, 
uh, some elevators have proprietary systems and others don't. So that it's almost if you buy an elevator with a proprietary system, you've painted yourself in a corner in a certain way for future maintenance to work. Is that still true or, or how's that all sort out today? It, it is still true and that's one of the benefits of a spec as well is a spec uh, sh could and should have language in it to prevent any uh, bidder or contractor from putting in proprietary equipment. But for those of, that don't know what proprietary equipment means, it basically is equipment that is not universally uh, serviceable or maintainable or has restrictions on, on, uh, on accessing the levels of adjustment uh, in the elevators. So the reason that's important is because after the modernization, you want to be able to have anyone service the elevator later on. You want to be able to put it out the bid and get fair bids from everyone. So if, if, if a company puts a proprietary system in your building, you're kind of married to them, at least for a while, because they're the only ones that can service so, it. Yeah, because we're getting close to the end of the show. I want to talk about your workshop in a second. But So the benefit of having a non-proprietary system, it allows you as time goes on to get bids and maintain your elevator and not have to use a specific vendor. You know, By thinking this yes. through in the beginning, you uh, have a system that gives you the absolute flexibility for controlling costs down the road. Is that a simple way to say it? Absolutely, that's a good way to say it. Yeah, it's, it's about controlling costs. Well, I know your company is uh, about to offer a workshop mm -hmm. on, I mean, what, what's the title of it, six? The six steps to a highly successful elevator modernization. And uh, we, we actually introduced the, the workshop um, the first of this year. We've already conducted a few, and we've got a few scheduled. Um, the workshop really came about, it was really an idea I've had for many years, and finally uh, pulled it together in the form of a workshop. And it's, it's a workshop that is designed to, to give to boards or their appointed committees who are at the inception stage of their elevator modernization project. And um, what's great about the workshop is it's not a generic workshop. We tailor the workshop to the specific uh, participants in the workshop. So you're much more efficient than I am because I was going to do one on the eight steps to successful modernization. But step one was drink a lot. And then the last step was to be drink Pray more. <laughs> no, you know, because that's a complicated thing. And it is. I've seen a lot of people focus simply on money and not looking at all these variables that mm -hmm. can either have a short-term or long-term effect on it. So when is your workshop? Well, that's, that's another good question. Our workshop is whenever the board is available. That's the thing. We, we customize the workshop for each board. So before the workshop, we survey their elevator and we tailor the workshop to their elevator project. So in the workshop, they're getting an assessment of their elevators, a discussion about the needed upgrades, the cost, the time frame. So the idea is board members come away equipped to make intelligent decisions about their elevators. Does this workshop so, cost them any money? It's a free workshop, and we hold the workshop normally where the boards have their regular meetings at a time that's convenient for them. And if they want more and they want to go to your website, that is? Our website is www.precisionmod.com. So is, it, is it scrolling on the bottom right now? Can we do that? No? no last minute, we should, have, <laughs> we should have prepared better for, for this. But I would say, you know, after having been in this business over 25 years, Jim is a very knowledgeable person and certainly a great opportunity for boards who are considering this to get another perspective on their elevator modernization because it's, it's very complicated and it's not just a short-term effect of the cost. There's a lot of long-term issues. So I want to thank Jim Hutchinson for being here today on our show Condo Insider. We've known each other you, about Richard. 25 years yeah, or so. Yeah, about 25 you years, know, Richard. No wonder I drink a lot. But anyway, <laughs> I'm boy kidding. He's a very good friend and a very knowledgeable guy. So I want to thank you all for watching Condo Insider this week. Next week, we're going to talk about protecting your association money and the threats of cybersecurity. And we have a national expert coming into town just to talk to you. Aloha.